last uh, question for today. Remember Thank you very much for this very interesting uh, uh, presentation and very interesting data. And uh, so Nissen from Salzburg, Austria. Uh, I wonder whether uh, you saw any increase in diagnosis of chronic disease because, I mean, giving extra points to, to GPs for treating chronic care patients better might be an incentive to do some extra screening and to make, to make more patients that you can earn points with. And this also may be, the, uh, the, uh, the same effect might answer um, the question that was discussed before about the cancer mortality. I mean, if you have countries that do a lot of screening, you detect a lot of tumors that uh, are not really malignant and you increase your survival rates. How yeah. about um, the answer to that is, is yes. So the, actual, the way the actual payment system works is that the there is a multiplier effect between the point score and the number of patients with a condition. So the more patients with a condition that the doctor has, the more money they got. So there is an incentive to, uh, to increase diagnosis. Two points to make about that. Um, first is, and this comes back to, the, in a sense, the detail of the scheme. When the scheme was first introduced, the multiplier in the equation was the square root of the number of patients with the condition. And two years ago, the square root was taken out of the formula. Hmm. Okay, so that's, that's a subtle, but actually for doctors, quite an important difference in the amount of money they get. So the view was that the, by introducing the square root of the prevalence, there was not a sufficient incentive for doctors to increase the number of patients. And so the square root has been taken out. But then, and this is a good place to leave it hanging, because you're going to say... Oh, gosh. What if doctors only code a diagnosis when they have achieved the quality indicator? What if they code, if a patient has high blood pressure, what if they code it in free text only until the blood pressure is at a satisfactory level? And then they put in the electronic code for hypertension. Would doctors do that? <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah. Thank you very much. Again, Mars and Roland, it was uh, a very large pleasure, and thank you, everybody, from uh, participating in this uh, discussion. We will just, uh, I'll just give, uh, yeah. We were we were seeing that these uh, results were based on research and quality improvement in different ways and uh, we would just like to, to we would just like to, to pretend uh, to present to you a course uh, for young researchers in quality improvement which is being arranged by equip this year by Pete Fendenbush here you are Pete thank you Tina this one okay thank you Tina now Everything is working. Thank you. Um, dear colleagues, uh, the people over here, Tina, I'm not organizing. Uh, a lot of other people are helping, and I'm just uh, well. one of the organizers, so I, I won't take all the credit on the contrary. I think uh, the, one of the most important initiative uh, uh, members who who's taking initiative was Frede, and uh, whenever, or whoever is here and wants to uh, keep in contact with Frede and some other um, uh, uh, experts in quality improvement should come to Ghent this year because he will be there for four days and we will have a very nice interaction. So the organization this year is uh, for equip done by Domus Medica which is the um, uh, um, College of the Flemish General Practitioners in Belgium and uh, the Ghent University and it's in the Ghent University where we will meet and have the course. So it's about, about research and quality improvement in primary care and I urge and ask you to look into the details of the program which are on the website and I'll show you uh, where to find the website in a moment. Young people and people feeling young are invited to come to Ghent uh, this summer and get emerged in the world of quality improvement research. 
we will uh, offer you the possibility of visiting some local quality projects uh, of which we are very proud and, and uh, which you can visit and ask questions and uh, perhaps it will be good for the projects also to have this international contacts and uh, enhance their quality further. There will be a lot of personal interaction because we foresee a small group of only 20 students um, and if there is more uh, uh, inter uh, interest then uh, we will do the summer course next year also not in Ghent but in another place um, and other people are already working on the, the preparation of it. We foresee a very nice and interesting uh, mixture of some lectures, um, but not only lectures because that's taking too much time and we think that learning is also very important doing your own work and uh, getting uh, and, and being reflective on, reflective on your own work. So we will have small group work, uh, develop your own case study uh, and present it to, to, to the whole group at the end of, uh, of the summer school and I already told we have some field visits. So what can you expect? You can expect that some of the very important things we want to do with Equip is um, enhance the network of people working and thinking about quality improvement and research and quality improvement. And we think the summer school, and that's something all of the Equip members um, uh, in the last days uh, really uh, thought about and, and said it is important to have this group of people meeting and in this way uh, enlarge the network. Build your knowledge and improve your skills in a challenging surrounding and I'll show you the surrounding in a minute and uh, we hope your expertise will get up um, within these four days and we do believe we can do that. It is in Belgium. I, hope, I don't know if we will have a government but uh, even if there is no government in Belgium it works and it will continue. Belgium, as you know, is in the heart of Europe, a founding member of the UA, and we even uh, host the uh, UE and uh, NATO headquarters. Ghent is a very nice uh, historic town. It's the third large city in Belgium. It is 60 kilometers from Brussels and easily reached by train within half an hour uh, from the airport. So, so I show you some pictures. It, uh, I, I believe, uh, Freda, I can be as proud as uh, you are from areas uh, being proud of Ghent. Um, and we will, uh, we are in the center of the city with, uh, the, um, with the course, so you will be, you have the opportunity to visit uh, beforehand or even during uh, the course. There's happening a lot in Ghent, even in the summer months, when, uh, um, which is the holiday period. And uh, for people who are interested in art and culture, you have a, a large diversity of ancient and modern arts and a lot of museums to visit. If you want to see them all, you should stay more than a week. Um, we have a university which is, uh, has a long-standing tradition and one of the um, uh, opportunities this year is that since this year, uh, the, um, uh, um, the university also is recognized as the WHO Collaborative Center for Primary Care and Primary Care Research. So uh, that's one of the reasons that the university is very interested in organizing the summer uh, school. I think we have a very nice fair rate for you to offer, uh, 700 euros inclusive, uh, um, uh, some uh, nice hosting. It is not a very luxurious hotel, it's a youth hostel, but it's really in the center and it's uh, uh, nice and quiet to, to stay for some days. People who want a more luxurious uh, hotel, they can look for their own and then um, uh, the conference rate is 550 euro. But all is on the website and please go to it. If you think you know somebody who qu can be interested or uh, um, who, who is interested in um, attending the summer school, please pass the information, pass the leaflet or uh, give the uh, uh, address of the website uh, to them. If you register during the conference, because we, have, <laughs> we will offer you a free box of Belgian chocolates. We have three boxes, <laughs> so the first thing, <laughs> go to Dirk. Uh, Dirk, where are you? Uh, <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. There you go.